I'm Josh Liston from On The Bubble Podcast, an oral history of television fandom, part of the Gunner Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other awesome geeky shows at GunnerGeekNetwork.com. Welcome to episode 279 of Better Podcasting. On this show, we have a bit of a shorter episode, but we wanted to bring you a long-awaited How I Save My Podcast story. In this week's Better Podcasting Download, we have a twofer with one article asking the question if podcasting is all about patience and another article about a UK podcast consortium. And finally, in this week's Better Podback, we give our thoughts about a question pondering if background audio distractions matter as much as they once did. Lauren, start the show now. This is Better Podcasting. We are hobby podcasters through and through, just like you. That's why we are different. We minimize the money talk so that you can focus on building a better podcast. Welcome to episode 279 of Better Podcasting. It may be a shorter one. However, the excitement is still here because SP is here. It's a good week to be podcasting. Heck, any week is a good week to be podcasting, especially with hobby podcasting. I get to podcast with my friend, Stephen, who we still need to meet in person. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but it might be within... 12 months of happening. We'll see. <laughs> yes, we are here with a a shorter episode, as we mentioned in the intro. If you skipped over that, yes, it's a little shorter today. We acknowledge that there is no featured segment. However, there still is a lot of good podcasting conversation to be had. And we are pleased to feature another How I Save My Podcast story. I think it's about time for a different kind of How I Save My Podcast story, one that's not about using your backups and not about people flaking out on your recording. This is about tech failing and how quick thinking while you're trying to record with people can actually save your podcast. Also, I, I want to prove to SP that I can screw other things up besides not having enough backups to go in. All right. So a while ago... I was recording with somebody about a local comic convention. Owner of the local comic store. We were timing this out well so that the episode could come out before the convention. There would be plenty of time for anybody who was close enough to the area to hear it and be able to figure out a way to get down here. And for anybody local to me to be able to hear it and, oh yeah, we have a convention going on that weekend. So they could have heard it. So we're sitting there, we're recording. I use eCaster, which is basically the Craig bot from Discord, except not tied into Discord. So you don't have to worry about Discord resources messing with your allotted bandwidth on everything. And we're recording and everything is going fine. You know, his quality is good. My quality is good. Everything is good. All right. And then all of a sudden he can't hear me. I can hear him perfectly fine. I don't know what to do. We're halfway through this interview. I can't really reschedule it because the con is just a few weeks away. And I've already got things scheduled to record beyond that. I need this recording to happen that day. So I spent some time trying to scramble. I'm unplugging cables. I'm plugging cables back in. Like we were literally working and then all of a sudden it just wasn't working anymore. I have no idea what happened. I still have no idea what happened. And it's never happened again. So I want to think it was just a glitch in the matrix somehow. But how could I save my podcast and have this episode ready? Well, I remembered that eCaster has a chat function. So... While I was uh, while I was recording with him, I would say whatever question I was going to ask him and then type that question into the chat so that he could see the question. Yes, the interview was not as good as it should have been and was going for the earlier parts because you couldn't really have that interaction since he couldn't hear me. But he picked up on what I was doing. So 
he knew that pauses of nothing were me recording the question. He knew that he was going to get the question typed out and then he could answer it. So we can't really get the back and forth going, but we can get it going well enough to have an episode. And really the key here is being familiar with what you're using for your equipment, being familiar with the services that you're using, being as familiar with everything as possible is going to take these crazy times that pop up and give you a chance to save your podcast in a way that just doesn't involve using the 12th backup. Just remember, everything you're using is a tool. It can be used to make your podcast good. SP, am I a tool? <laughs> of, co- of course. <laughs> We've established that over the last 278 episodes. Absolutely. And some bonus episodes in there, too. Good on waffles here, Chris, for actually knowing a way around what you're doing. I will state that the guest needs to be a little tech savvy, I guess, or at least the, the have the ability to roll with whatever changes you're making. This is a drastic change that he yeah. had to do and good on him for doing that, but it might not work in every situation. Yeah. And you know, if you've still got a way to record, um, the other thing that we we've thrown out there before in situations where your actual communication platform is, is broken, but you're still somehow recording on either side is you, if you are able to pick up a phone and, Try to call in ideally uh, uh, with earbuds so you're not getting echo or anything like that. But that could be a way to kind of keep communication going. So you're recording in one way, but you're hearing each other through another platform. However, I will say this, that uh, in this situation, that is absolutely amazing that you're able to come up with any solution at all. And that that's fantastic trying to, to do it that way and then stitch it together later. I have to say that uh, I once did an episode of the Walking Dead podcast where we couldn't align uh, myself, Steve Boyd and Chris Farrell. We were on this podcast about The Walking Dead and we couldn't align our recording times. So I did the podcast basically twice, once with one of them, once with the other, and then tried to edit it together in the end. It, same things that, that Chris mentioned there, uh, this Chris mentioned, uh, is that there's not a lot of back and forth that was able to happen. So I know exactly what you're meaning. <laughs> There's tools out there right now, and I don't, the, the name of them is not coming to my head that you can record asymmetrically. Like you can give questions out and mm-hmm. somebody can give the answers to the question no matter where they are in the world. So that technology is available. I still think a good conversational podcast, like we do here, this is a conversational podcast. I think a lot of the benefit of this is when you're going back and forth. Once you get to that time shifted recording, I think, I mean, you can pull it off as conversation, but I think it might be better off as a narrative style. Yeah, I think it would really, you'd really have to be good at at acting in order to keep it feeling conversational. And that's both parties involved, because if one of you is not up to the, the skills of that, I think it's going to be kind of obvious. That's my general thought about it. So I agree with you. I know that Waffles is experienced with artificial intelligence right now in different formats. And one of the things that he brought up for another project that I was doing is he was asking if he thought it was okay to like fix a recording mistake using an AI impersonation. Ooh, that would be that there's all sorts of legal and moral questions involved with that. (laughs) <laughs> if it's yourself, you have all of the authority to put your voice sample in and get a voice out. If it's somebody else, you would have to have them do it as well. Absolutely. Now, I I don't know that the tools are there to... The, the tools are there that for some people you might get by. If they're in the middle of a recording, I don't think you will. They They sound different enough that I think they actually stand out more under that idea of fixing something versus just putting out raw material. That's fair enough. So there's a lot of like Doctor Who lost recordings out there just because the BBC was distributing their tapes everywhere in the world. So there was some tapes found in different portions of the world that used to be 
BBC Studios, and they have reclaimed them, brought them back for digital remastering. And a lot of times the soundtrack is there, but the digital is gone. So what they do is they go back and they put in some sort of animation, in my opinion, poorer animation, but at least it gives you an idea visually on the screen. We talk all the time about podcasts on YouTube. We have in the last few weeks, right? And having a static image, but something moving on the screen is going to be better on YouTube than not. In this case, television, you're not going to listen to the television. You're going to want to watch the television. So it's done. It's not the best work that the BBC has ever done, (laughs) but it allows for something that's been lost to be brought to the screen. I prefer just to do my best impression of whoever is on the podcast. It might not even need to be my podcast. I might just be coming in there to guest voice somebody else. Hmm. And then he mentions 12th backup. (laughs) I don't think I've ever used the 12th backup before, but I think I've used the 8th or 9th. So at least I got that. (laughs) So thank you very much, Waffles, aka Chris, for sending that in. Now it's time to go ahead and get into the download. This is the Better Podcasting Download. A couple of weeks ago on May 4th, it's May 17th right now, so within the past two weeks, Eric Newsom, who writes Make a Noise, a creator's guide to podcasting. A lot of people cite this book as a podcast stalwart. Like if you're going to research into podcasting, Eric Newsom's book is probably on the curriculum, right? So Eric has this Substack newsletter. It's called Audio Insurgent. And I've been subscribing to a few Substacks out there, trying his out. He wrote one on May 4th called What If Podcast Success is All About Patience? And a few quotes from the article, I won't read off the whole thing, but he says, patience is a very important word for podcasting. He goes on to say, as podcasting has taken its place in the media landscape next to movies, TVs, and books, a number of executives who previously worked in movies, TVs, and books now run podcast companies. Podcasting has picked up a number of bad habits from these other media forms. Central to them all is the need for instant hits. First of all, I want to say these are professional podcasts, podcast companies. These are podcasts that have a lot of investment into them. We're not talking hobby podcasts, but it does align the issue that these bad habits are coming into the space, even into the independent podcasters or maybe even hobby podcasters. And we'll continue on in a second. He continues to say a sizable narrative project can often take nine to 12 months to produce. This is with a team, folks. This is with a team of five to 10 to 15, 25 people. And they're saying a narrative project. So really a season of a podcast is probably what he's talking about. So yes, narrative style podcasts are incredibly time intensive for a team to put together. And most hobby podcasts are like one or two people, really, maybe a team of four. So a narrative style podcast that what you hear on NPR, it can't be done, but it's going to take you a while to produce it. Continuing on, Eric says, once every once in a while, A new podcast comes out and is an unqualified and immediate hit with staying power and a lot of long-term potential. Again, that happens, quote, every once in a while, unquote, in an industry that puts out a thousand new podcasts every day. All right, I'm not sure a thousand new podcasts every day is accurate or not. I'd have to delve into the stats there. But yes, I will say, as we know from Hobby Podcasts, Becoming an unqualified and immediate hit is like winning the lottery. And it's very, very, very rare if it happens. And I I would argue that it ever really happens with hobby podcasts. And it's very rare to happen in an independent or professional podcast. Quote, most podcast franchises take patience. They require vision for sure, but also the time to stress, test their ideas, build their talent, and really understand what's possible. Even those with brilliant ideas can't get every detail right. It takes trial and error. It takes experimentation. It takes a willingness to get things wrong. It takes a culture that can analyze their work with clarity and honesty. It takes patience. Totally agree. 
I mean, we talked about it before. If you want to revise your podcast, it takes time. It takes a lot of effort to get your project better. We've been talking about better podcasting for 279 episodes now, including this one. So yeah, it takes time. And then finally, he says, quote, there are many who have come into podcasting over the past few years thinking it was easy. The returns would be quick and huge and that even the most modest efforts would be rewarded. The good news is that soon enough, all those people will be gone, unquote. Ooh, harsh, but true. <laughs> I mean, how many hobby podcasts do you hear that like start up and they're gone within well under a year? I mean, it used to be seven episodes. I heard 21 episodes, but making it a year is huge. So there's a lot of podcasts that don't make it that far. And yeah, that's hobby podcasts. And I could see that. But a lot of celebrity podcasts don't get renewed after season one as well. So yeah, it's, I can, I can see this. It's either a hit or you move on. And if you're going to give hobby podcasting a, a shot, if it's really your passion and that's the key there, if it's your passion, if you're having fun, then you'll get better over time and you might get your community, your audience, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be within three weeks. You're, you're not going to no. it's just not going to happen. Yeah. When I was reading this information today, um, what comes to mind is streaming platforms in like the TV and movie space. And, and what I mean by that is that there's almost a bit of a pivot there that has happened in recent years where some of these providers are realizing that you're not always going to get the immediate out the door bang. And sometimes it is a, they, they're kind of shaping the content they're offering for a longer burn and podcasting similar to that, where you might end up having a bunch of material out there. And it doesn't pick up steam for a little while until all of a sudden it gets some buzz. And on the streaming movie and TV platforms, it's sort of similar where sometimes they put things out there and then all of a sudden, who knows how much later, it could even be years later, people start to discover it, talk about it. And now there's suddenly a huge influx of people because there's a bunch of buzz about it. So I think that that podcasting falls in line with that. And yeah, the part that talks about how people came in and businesses came in put a bunch of money in it, into it and suddenly thought that everything was going to be instant success. That's just not aligned always with the way podcasting works or, or, or consumption works. And so as a hobby podcaster, that's why we always say, have fun. That's got to be the number one driver for your podcast is to make sure that you're having fun. And this is one of the reasons why, because you might not get that instant feedback or that instant interaction with your audience. And it might come a little bit later. So at least the fun will hopefully get you through. I've heard a lot of people say, if you're striving for success, it might take years. And I've heard three years from a lot of independent podcasters that have finally gotten to the point where they would call their projects successful. So, and that's an independent podcaster that probably put in a large amount of effort into promotion or whatever sales they've got going on ads, uh, pro, you know, whatever they're selling, uh, in addition to their podcast services, pro, uh, products, I want to say projects, products. I think that that is probably true where if you're starting from the ground and you don't have a celebrity name, it's going to take you three years to get to the point where you're off and running. Now that's not going to happen all the time, but for from the ancillary data that I continue to hear, that's probably a good indicator. Yeah, I have I have no real thoughts about that timeline other than the fact that if that's based on historical data, I, I would suspect the data might be a little bit skewed now after all of this money and all of these people came in over the last few years, right? Like I think that there might be a bit of a shift, but I have nothing to dispute it, so... I've never seen, just talking about money into the space, I've never seen a concentrated analysis into like the ad revenue and the CPM as I've seen over the last three to six months because of the quasi recession that's going on right now. I know some people don't want to call it recession. Some people do, but there is a lack of money into the ad space. So everybody's like, where did all the money go? So they're talking about like sponsors not being there or what the average CPM is that went down. So I know for a fact the last three to six months, there has been a reduction 
in the money coming in. And there's been a focus, an unprecedented focus in podcasting on that, indicating a large portion of the industry is now dependent upon ad revenue, which has not been the case before. And it just goes to show you that the industry has changed rapidly in the past few years. We'd love to know what your thoughts are about this, as well as the article we're just about to talk about, which is UK based, because I saw this press release and I'll just quote it here. Quote, ACAST launches publishers in podcasting, a UK consortium dedicated to advancing the podcasting industry, promoting trusted audio journalism and encouraging healthy debate. Publishers in podcasting, brackets PIP end bracket, is the very first membership consortium of its kind, bringing in together some of the most influential publishers in the UK. The purpose is to use members' collective experience and trust to progress the podcast industry for the common good by sharing information, expertise, and, and experience and expertise. The consortium will aim to continue to further the power of podcasting industry for publishers, advertisers, and listeners alike. Now, I think there's things to be disputed in there, um, but also potentially agreeing with because they are UK based. Because I know immediately your my mind is going, ah, there's been other groups like this before, but have there been in the UK? I can't speak to that. And and I feel like I haven't heard any any massive consortiums coming out of the UK in this realm. So I think technically might be true, but possibly slightly misleading in the way that is phrased. However, Putting that aside, I wanted to bring this up because it's kind of follow up to what we talked about a few weeks back that whatever that thing was, the podcast uh, standards project. That's what it was. I can't even remember what the name was. The podcast standards project where there seems to be these groups that are coming together now with the common good of of a, a central idea, basically, and, and trying to shift the industry. And I think that we're going to see more of these happen. I think we're going to see more different names banding together. Because we are, you know, podcasting is still such an, a new medium that there's still a lot of room to have this, this shift happen in different directions. And what used to be a sort of tight grip by a group of bigger names within the industry, they've, they've lost their grip, you know, and I'm not just talking big names as people. I'm talking big names as in businesses and whatnot as well. You now have such a large landscape that it is coming down to specific big shifters like Spotify and Apple, who are the ones that are kind of sh making different shifts because they're the one that's at the end delivering a lot of podcasts to people. You don't have these other creators and, and content providers that have the same grip that they used to. And so I think these groups are going to start to come up in an attempt to sort of claw their way back. But also, I think it's worth considering the regional differences because we have talked before about how there are different regional restrictions and laws in other uh, areas. And this includes things like newsletters. We've talked about newsletters before on the podcast and that there are different regional restrictions as far as spam laws and things go. You might find that some of these different groups around the world are going to be a little bit different than their international counterparts because they might be focused around a certain common trend within the region. So I would encourage everybody to keep an eye on what the individual trends are, not only for podcasting as a whole, but in your general area, because there might be something that's different than, let's say you live in the UK and you listen to a lot of podcasts based out of the US, you might find the UK podcast uh, market or area is a little bit different. Also, innovation and trends, as you called it, can arise in a lot of places for a lot of different reasons. Diversity of thought is amazing when it comes to the human condition. And if you can take some innovation or success that has happened in a different region and apply it to your region, whatever region that is, we, I know we have some listeners in the UK. I also know we have listeners in Canada and New Zealand and Australia and a few other listeners throughout the world. It doesn't matter where you are as long as you're reaching into what the 
innovation thing, the, the successful movements in podcasting, and then take advantage of them if you can, if you want to make your podcast better, better podcasting, <laughs> and you want to behold these things that have happened in different places and apply it to your show, you're going to be ahead of the game. And even if you're just having fun with the hobby of podcasting, like podcasting is your hobby. Like some people play golf. That's their hobby. Some people go fishing. That's their hobby. Some people make maple syrup and that's their hobby. Okay. I, it, literally, I had a coworker that made his own maple syrup. It was really good. He retired and I really miss that maple syrup. But you do have different things that you can adapt and just make your hobby better, you know, continue your passion or, you know, just enjoy the diversity of podcasting. If you're a podcast fan, you can pod fan. Can we say that pod fan? Podly fans. Sorry. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, well, we'd love to know what your thoughts are about all of this and, and the terrible name I just came up with, which I don't go to the website. It might exist. I don't know. But we'd love to know your thoughts. Email podcast at betterpodcasting.com or come to our Discord at betterpodcasting.com slash Discord and you can tell us there and maybe you will hear your feedback on a future edition of The Better Podback. This is where we here at Better Podcasting turn the show over to you as we run through some of your feedback. We call this segment Better Pod Back. Oh, it was a fun one over the past week in the Better Podcasting Discord server. We had a lot of good conversation about podcasting. And I think I'll go ahead and start us off here with one that uh, was a question from Damien, the DM, you know, the resident third co-host of Better Podcasting. And he asked me a question. He had said, do you get transcripts for BP? And then I ended up answering that. And he followed up and said, I was going to ask if you've done any experimenting with adding them into the video using DaVinci. My new Hindi sub comes with 20 hours of transcription, so I'm trying to find uses for it. So, number one, no, I don't do transcripts at this time. There's a whole bunch of side conversation that we won't get into, but I, I have some personal thoughts about transcriptions and, and the way that the industry is currently set up with them. And I, I don't personally have... Uh, want to spend the effort into trying to do transcriptions, even with some of these recent AI tools that have come out that have made it easy, cheap, or free. But now that he's asked some questions about this, uh, I'll probably be trying to talk with him a little offline and do a little experimenting because that's one of the reasons I love doing better podcasting is have people ask us questions about things that we're using for podcasting. And maybe they're questions like this that are outside of the way we use the thing. And so in this situation, I would love to look into his question in regard to transcriptions and DaVinci Resolve. It's a great conversation point. It's a great experimentation point for me. And I'm, I'm happy to take that discussion further with him. And I'll probably do it behind the scenes. But also, I'll report back findings here and in the Discord server. By taking it behind the scenes, are you take, talking about taking Damien back to the woodshed and, you know... Just doing something to the third co-host, you know? No, I'm not. Rating him, I'm not punishing him. Okay, I'm not. not okay. No, no, it's not. I, it's not going to be one of those hazing things where I have to, like, you know. Never well, mind. Come on, <laughs> you bring out a new co-host, you should haze him a little bit. I mean, that's that's what happens. I do have a question, not only for Damien but for everybody else that has spent the time and the effort into creating a transcript for your hobby podcast. The first question is. How do you post it? How do you get it out there? How is it even useful for you in that matter? You, once you've created it, how is it out there? So that's number one. And number two, have you seen any results from that? I've seen anecdotal or heard anecdotal evidence about transcripts. A lot of it comes from like the paid, the professional industry or independents that are doing it for money and, and to make money. I'm wondering specifically from our audience of hobby podcasters, how they're using their transcripts if they're creating them. I know a lot of hobby podcasters, like, I do this for the fun of it. I do understand there are some legitimate reasons to make transcripts. One of them is accessibility. However, I've never heard anybody come to us on Better Podcasting or any of my other shows saying, I need a transcript for your show. I need the accessibility. I have a disability that I can't listen to your show. 
or I can't understand your show. I have yet to run into that. Maybe there is somebody out there and maybe you are getting a transcript through, I don't know, subtitles on YouTube or something like that. If so, I'd like to hear that as well. But from our audience, primarily, what I want to hear is if you do do transcripts, then how are you using them and what success have you had with them? I'm also still, when I think about transcriptions and the accessibility thing, I still feel like the final jumping point will will probably be something like, and I hate to throw this buzzword out here, but it was a buzzword before it was buzzword, is, is the AI tools like the Google uh, AI um, thing that they've had on the on their phones. And I don't know if it's just Pixel oh. phones or if it goes into um, the whole Android ecosystem where on my phone I can push a button and it starts to give me uh, instant transcriptions of whatever is playing on my phone. So if I'm playing a podcast, it's that. If I'm playing an ad on a website, it's that. It's picking up the audio in real time and transcribing it in real time. And I feel like, you know, those tools are only going to get better. And those have been around, I think, on Pixel phones for a couple of years now, maybe even a bit longer. You know, the last three years are just a wash to me, you know, since 2020, it all blends together. But they've been around for a while. And I feel like, the more front ends, and I'm not just saying phones, but I'm saying like, you know, if there's, let's say a, a web interface and it starts to do these sort of things, that might be where the the majority of the accessibility solution comes into play. I do know on Apple devices, specifically Apple phones, and I've not played with it whatsoever, but I have read that if you use the native podcast app on Apple, that you can get subtitles basically, or transcripts, you know, whatever you want to call it there. So I know that's available. I have not used it. I don't know how to get them, but I know it's an option that you can turn on on an Apple device in addition to what Steven just said on the Android side. So there is, uh, on both systems, there is a way to do it. We also had a comment that's a follow-up about the paint drying saga, right, SB? <laughs> Yeah, Liberty dude. He comes in and says, how far off are we from asking AI to create a watching paint drying podcast using a deep fake of SJ? And we had SP's murdered beard or Aluron or Jason from smoking and drinking in space come and say the future is now. I want to say I talked about this last night with Ashley Hamer from Descript. She also does a hobby podcast called Taboo Science. And I did ask her this question and she basically said the same thing. Yeah, you can do it now. And there's a lot that goes with that. There's ethical considerations. There's, does it really sound like a person? That sort of thing. And I don't think in May of 2023 that it would be really possible to do 100% AI derived podcast from conception to script to recording and throw out there. I don't think that you can do it, but I don't think it would be very successful because there's certain personal quality that's missing in that. And Ashley agreed with me there, but yes, I, I think the future is now Steven. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think that, um, there's some pretty good tools that are out there right now to fake voices. We talked about this a little earlier, but I think that they're still not fully there yet. And Adobe's been working on this for a long time that, and they've come up with some pretty good results. But every time I've heard any of these tools outside of the demonstration that's initially provided, there's a lot of things that are still lacking, but they'd get by a lot of people, especially if people are listening on two times. So anyways, We'll see. But as for the deep fake of me, it'll be a little more obvious. The deep fake still, you know, a sustained amount of video over a long time. It still becomes very obvious. Um, you know, you can get away with some short clips sustained. Not so much. But hey, I guess someone will make the paint drying podcast. <laughs> it is coming sooner or later. We had another post by Yakko dot org, who is the beloved transformer podcast in our discord and yakko said google podcast deciding they have found a better feed for your show continues to be the dumbest and most frustrating idea in podcasting 
Combine that with remembering that PowerPress now removes email addresses by default in feeds to keep down spam. And my morning has just been fantastic. Yeah, I don't really want to get into this too much or I'm going to rant, but the whole Google podcast indexing feeds, we've run into this issue for a long time with multiple shows. It's so frustrating that things seem to randomly change over there. I don't know what it is. It's actually the reason I I did not keep using Google Podcasts. I couldn't stand not knowing if what was in there was accurate because I kept having my own shows randomly get changed around. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. And as for PowerPress, uh, I, 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 yeah, I know there's been some recent changes that have me slightly alarmed with the way that it's, it, it operates. Yeah, I would just want to throw this out there to Jeremy, who's Yakko. And he said all of this kind of in a rant and that was just perfect for the Discord server. Just yeah. to, you know, get that frustration out within your community. Just say, hey, this is something that is going on in my podcast, and I need a podcast buddy or group to just throw this out. That, that was great. Thank you very much, Jeremy, for doing that. And the next thing we wanted to talk about comes again from Damien, the DM. And this is an exciting moment. I know this is exciting for a lot of people because a lot of people really love this software. And from what I've heard for people who whose uh, you know, work fits into the, the box that Hindi provides, it's a fantastic piece of software. And that's a lot of people. A lot of people seem to really enjoy Hindenburg and Damien said, quote, Team Hindi pushed the button today. Looks like they still had some licensing bugs to work out when it went live, like people who ordered after a certain date getting a free upgrade, not carrying through automatically. But it's officially live now, end quote. So, yeah, this is exciting because this is something that that version, uh, is version two, was was a lot of good fanfare about it. And from what I hear, the people who, who use Hindenburg uh, and Hindenburg works for them, it's a good update. So thanks, Damien, for keeping us informed about all of that. I do really appreciate you keeping us abreast of the situation. I've enjoyed Hindi in its first generation of every time that I saw it. I think I used it once as Hindenburg journalist. But I know that a lot of people use it, love it. And I look forward to hearing their more extensive reviews as Hindenburg version two continues to be out there officially now. Moving on to the next topic, we have Josh coming in with a comment about our beloved now hobby podcast profile. It continues to get a lot of love and it's not just from Josh, but he says very much enjoyed the hobby podcaster profile guys. So yay, it was great. Anthony, thank you so much for doing that so many months ago. And we now have lined up a few more to do in the future. If you would like to have yourself and your hobby podcast featured on the hobby podcaster profile, let us know. We'll get you the questions and we'll arrange a time to do it in the future. The questions are out there to multiple people. We just now wait for the responses back and it might not be this season. It might be another season, but hey, we wait patiently. Uh, Waffles also said you should set you should get more of those set up. So thanks for the support on that Waffles. And we really appreciate it. Now, here's the exciting one. Liberty Dude came to our Discord server after your Better Podcasting Chats with SP just last night. And he said, how to deal with background kids and pet sounds during live guest recordings of a podcast. During the just wrapped up live with SP, there was a putty cat spelled that way, wishing to join the conversation. With the insertion sometimes being intertwined with the guest speaking, it would seem very difficult to edit out. Well, I can't understand the security issues with one's children in a world after lockdowns where pets have become such an extension of people's personalities and personal stories. Is it preferred to edit the noise out or contextually introduce the source and embrace presence of our extended personalities? And then uh, after a couple comments later, he actually came back and I wanted to put this in up front. He said, I was wondering in the new normal, should we be trying to embrace it? I can see before the dark years, everyone was trying to produce studio quality as close as they could. But with the explosion of required video streaming communications among non-pod, non-production population, the audience, would we not expect in casual interviews a greater tolerance and maybe even desired curiosity toward including pets that have joined the content? 
Now, before we get, talk about that, I just want to recap quickly a couple of random comments we had. Damien, the DM, said, we affectionately refer to the animals that make their way into podcasts as our kobolds. We had Waffle say, pets are features and not bugs. Unless the pot pet is a bug, then it's a feature and a bug. And we had Yakko say, to be fair, people with cats live because the cats allow it. It's probably a smart move to let it do its thing. So lots of love for the pets in the Discord. What are your thoughts about the question, SB? <laughs> All right. So normally when I'm interviewing another podcaster, I try to intervene beforehand if I notice an issue and I just mention it casually. But if they're going to go and record their normal ambient atmosphere, then OK, that's what it is. And in this case, that's what it is. Ashley said when I asked her, is that the cat? She said, yep, the cat's going to do its thing. So I tried and there was nothing that either of us could have do to silence the cat. The cat was the most vocal animal I have ever heard on a recording of a podcast. And I record with several people that <laughs> do have cats and other animals that I've heard. Normally, like a dog barking, it's it's a limited amount of time. Woof, 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 woof. You know, just for like the mailman coming or something like that. And then the dog settles down. This cat kept on going for like a half an hour, 40 minutes. By the end of the podcast, the cat had finally had its say. But the cat had been talking the entire time. So the question that I'm going to have to come up with, I haven't even started editing it, is how much of that do I take out? How much do I leave in? Because the cat talked at the same time that Ashley did, I'm going to have to leave at least some of it in. So how much do I leave it in? On a normal podcast, I would probably take it all out or try to take as much as possible out. In this one, I might let more of it slide just because of the nature of better podcasting chats with SP. That said, let me recap. For those that don't know, Ashley Hamer is an award-winning podcast host with the Curiosity Daily. She doesn't do that anymore. She also works in the industry with Descript, so professional podcast industry. And she does a very well-produced hobby podcast called Taboo Science. My expectations when she gets on the mic were probably a little higher than the reality of the situation. And she did admit during the show that when she records an actual podcast, she goes into a closet, which is audio treated with a different microphone, and she gets a higher quality of sound. So when she's streaming or interviewing or being interviewed, it's in a different setting than her normal setup. Wow, there's a lot to take in there, Stephen. But now that you know a little bit more, what are your thoughts? I 100% would do the same thing with you uh, in your scenario. Is, is it's an interview show? It's supposed to be a casual chat. You've mentioned that in your podcast all the time. I think that you've set the stage on that. Um, I think for someone who maybe doesn't have that and is thinking about just rolling with it and it's outside the norm of their usual content, I might introduce it in a way that acknowledges it i wouldn't try to say oh sorry about the bad quality or anything like that like i think that that's just a cliche that podcasters use and i think people who say that come off kind of lame if i'm being honest but introduce it in a way that's natural that that makes reference in the conversation to the cat or whatever it is and then the elephant's no longer in the room because if you're not addressing it on the mic the audience is going to be wondering, do they even realize that I can hear that? Like, you know, is, is that something that was supposed to be there? Is this an accidental thing? And at least if you're casually, you know, making light of it or whatever, then then the audience knows that you're aware and that gets some of it off of the uh, off of their wondering mind, basically. So I I agree with with what you're planning on doing um, with that also said, I would be curious about some of the cleanup tools, how they would do with it. I do know like Isotope has the dialogue. Uh, the, the, what is it called? It's like dialogue. Dialogue Isolate, I think is what it's called. And that's in the top tier of, of the RX pack. And that's supposed to help get rid of some of the stuff. And then I'd be curious about something like what we have done in the past with some of our episodes that, that we had issues is running it real time through the uh, RTX voice denoise just to see what that tool would do. I don't know that it's going to be a miracle worker worker over top of Ashley, but I'd be curious because those are things that we've looked at. Well, 
the R RTX one's something we've done before. And then I remember when Dialogue Isolate was was announced many, many, many years ago, and it seemed to get pretty favorable reviews. I might actually send you the raw recording <laughs> to see if you want to do anything with it. I don't know if I'm going to have time before it yeah. gets published because I want to get it out there as soon as possible. But maybe I'll have time to fool around with it as well. I'd be interested in all those. And I'd also be interested in running it real time through the NVIDIA broadcaster stuff as well. That's what I was referring to with the RTX voice. Yeah, that was the one I was talking about. So, okay. so have you ever had this situation? Let us know. What did you do? Did you just pull up a third seat and let the cat get involved and maybe even interview the cat? Or did you do something else? Please email podcast at betterpodcasting.com. Come to our Discord at betterpodcasting.com forward slash Discord. And you know what you should also do? Go to www.betterpodcasting.com. Look at all of our shows there. There's three of them listed. Subscribe to all three, including the, the chat with SP or chats, plural, sorry, chats with SP. Make sure you subscribe to all of our Better Podcasting podcasts because it is a bunch of content that we would love you to listen to. And as a reminder, if you want to join us with the Hobby Podcaster profile, please let us know. We will get you the questions and we will feature you on an episode as soon as we can. So I think we've gone and stretched out the episode as long as we can, SP, for episode 279 of Better Podcasting. I'm Steven saying we'll be back next week and we should have a revised release schedule soon. And I will have a very important personal announcement. So check out next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for checking out another episode of Better Podcasting. You can find the full back catalog of Better Podcasting at betterpodcasting.com. If you're into geeky podcasts, please check out the other podcasts on the Gunna Geek Network at gunnageeknetwork.com. This show was produced and edited by Stephen John Drew. Voice work was done by L.W. Salinas. Thanks again for listening or watching, and we hope to see you again next week.